This video guidance represents OHRP's current thinking on this topic at the time of production and should be viewed as recommendations unless specific regulatory requirements are cited. The use of the word must in OHRP guidance means that something is required under HHS regulations at 45 CFR Part 46. The use of the word should in OHRP guidance means that something is recommended or suggested but not required. An institution may use an alternative approach if the approach satisfies the requirements of the HHS regulations at 45 CFR Part 46. Hi, Dr. Mitchell. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me. Is this still a good time for us to talk? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I just had a few questions that I wanted to go over with you about this protocol that I'm about to submit to the IRB for review. Sure, no problem. And by the way, thank you very much for dropping it off yesterday so that I had a chance to go over the protocol and the informed consent document. I looked at them last night. Um, what can I help you with today? Well, as you know, this is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study of the effects of memoride on the cognitive function in subjects with schizophrenia. And the purpose of this study is to test whether memoride improves their memory. Um, subjects with schizophrenia will be admitted to the hospital for approximately two weeks, and during the first week of the study, subjects will undergo a physical exam, psychological and cognitive testing, and an MRI of the brain. During the second week of the study, subjects will receive either memoride or a placebo three times a day for seven days. And also during the second week, they will be doing an extensive series of cognitive tests to help us establish whether or not the subject's memory is improving. They will also receive a second MRI at the end of the second week. Tell me, will subjects need to come off of their medications to be eligible for this study? As you are well aware, taking someone with schizophrenia off of their medications could potentially make their symptoms worse. Right, um, actually no, we will not. Memoride will be added onto their current medications. So my question is, as the study will be focused on subjects with schizophrenia and a main symptom of their disorder is psychosis and or a thought disorder, if subjects are unable to give informed consent, what are my options? Well, let's just take a look at the regulations here. Um, the regulations specifically state that no investigator may involve a human being as a subject in research covered by the regulations unless the investigator has obtained the legally effective informed consent of the subject or the subject's legally authorized representative. So one option is that if you felt the subject could not give his or her own consent, you could discuss with the IRB the possibility of having the subject's legally authorized representative give consent. Okay, so if I did it that way, I think I would include the caveat that should the subject regain or develop their own capacity to consent, then his or her consent must be obtained for any further research. That's a great idea and that certainly makes sense. So it sounds like you would want to come up with a way to determine if a subject has the capacity to give informed consent. Now perhaps this is something you could consult about with some of your colleagues. Um, with respect to options for dealing with that issue. And if subjects are found to be unable to give their own informed consent, you could either have their legally authorized representative consent for them, or another option is you can decide that if they do not have the capacity to give their own informed consent, then they simply could not participate in the study. Now, of course, if you chose to exclude subjects that lack the capacity to give informed consent, you would want to consider if that would affect the overall validity of the study. And you and your team should think about what you think would be most appropriate, present it to the IRB for its consideration, and then, of course, the IRB would make the final determination in that regard. Okay, well, those are both really good ideas. Thank you very much. Um, are there other aspects of the informed consent that I should be mindful of? That's an excellent question, and, and the answer is yes. The regulations state that prospective subjects or the representative must have a sufficient opportunity to consider whether or not they wish to participate. Okay, well, I plan on sending the informed consent document to prospective subjects prior to meeting with them, and of course, we'll give them ample opportunity to ask questions and to think about whether or not they would like to participate when I meet with them in person. Okay, that sounds great. 
You also want to ensure that the possibility of coercion or undue influence would be minimized. And, as you know, the informed consent must be in a language that is understandable to the subject or the representative, and there can be no exculpatory language used in the consent. Okay, well, I'll be sure to double check the informed consent process to make sure that it meets these requirements. Thanks so much for taking the time to meet with me. It was very helpful and instructive. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Please feel free to stop by any time. Thank you. Have, Have a, a great weekend. weekend. You too. Take Thanks. care. Hi, Mr. Smith. Thank you so much for coming in today. Um, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking to you about your possible participation in this study. Well, thank you for inviting me, Dr. Presley. I'm glad to be here. Sure. Um, so a few weeks ago, I sent you a copy of the informed consent document. Did you receive it? And if so, did you get a chance to read it? Yes, I brought it with me. I did get a chance to read it over when I um, got it in the mail. Thanks. Great. Um, did you have any questions about what you've read so far? Um, so far, I think I'm OK, but I might have questions as we go along. Okay, that's totally fine. So the first thing I would like to emphasize is that the informed consent process is actually a process. It's not just having you sign this document today. So this means that we'll be providing you with information throughout the study and that you should always feel free to ask questions at any time, even after the study is over. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, well, let's get started then. Um, although I know that you've already read the informed consent document, I'm going to go over it again with you to just be sure that we all feel comfortable with what's been explained to you and that all of your questions have been answered. And then at that point, you'll have the opportunity to take all the time that you need to um, decide whether or not you'd like to participate okay, in the study. that sounds good. Okay, so first of all, we want you to understand that this study involves research. And research is very different from the clinical care that you receive from your regular psychiatrist in the community. Your regular doctor is treating you and is giving you care based on known scientific facts. And in this study, we're asking a question that we don't yet know the answer to. Well, I think I understand that because I met with my psychiatrist before I came here and he explained that to me. Okay, great. Well, now I'd like to move on and give you a little more information about the study. So the purpose of the study is to see if memoride improves memory, the ability to concentrate, and problem solve in people with schizophrenia. That's great because I sometimes have problems with those symptoms. I have tr trouble with concentrating sometimes. I have trouble with my memory. So it would really benefit me a lot to be in the study. Well, again, we don't know if this will work or not, and that's why we're doing this study. And we don't want you to have the misconception that this drug is going to improve that problem because at this point, we don't know whether it will or not. And although you might not benefit from the study directly, you will be contributing to determining if this drug improves cognitive abilities in people who have schizophrenia. Well, I guess even if I don't benefit, then I'm glad that other people might benefit who have schizophrenia, so that's a good thing. Well, we appreciate that. Um, as you know, this is an inpatient study, which means that you will be staying in this hospital on the research unit while you're in the study. The study will last for approximately two weeks, and we do realize that two weeks is a long time to be in the hospital. But as long as your symptoms are under control and that we feel that you are safe, um, the staff will take you off the unit during the day to participate in a variety of activities. That's good to know. Will there be any games or computers on the unit for me to use? Actually, yes. There is a computer and a TV with some video games. So. Okay, good, because otherwise I think I might get a little bored because it's two weeks very understandable. So, okay, so let me move on and tell you a little bit about the study design. So this study is called a double-blind placebo-controlled study, and I realize that's very much of a mouthful, so let me try and break that down a little bit for you, okay? So okay. do you know what a placebo is? Um, isn't it like a sugar pill or a fake pill or something like right, that? Right, right, that's about okay. right. So the placebo pill will look the same as the pills containing memoride, but it won't have any memoride in it. So the second part is the double blind study part, which means that neither you nor the research team will know if you're taking the study drug or the placebo. So this is a very common type of research design as it helps researchers avoid being biased when assessing study subjects. Right, but that's kind of scary. Will anybody know if I'm taking the drug or not? Definitely, yes. Um, the pharmacists will know, the pharmacists, and if there's ever any problem, all we need to do is call down to the pharmacy and they can break the blind, okay. which means that they'll tell us if you're on the study drug or not. Okay. And if that happens, will I then have to come off the study or? Um, yes. Actually, once the blind is broken, we would take you out of the study. I see. Okay. Okay. So finally, let me explain the last part of that, which is randomized. So let me explain what randomized means. Well, I think I know what that means already. Isn't it like when you flip a coin, 
So I might either go on the drug if I get a heads or tails, I might not go on the drug and get the placebo? Exactly. Okay. So you're going to have a 50-50 chance of being on the study drug. Okay. So okay. let's move in and talk a little bit now about what procedures you're going to <coughs> partake in if you join the study. Okay. Okay. So once the study begins, you'll be asked to take some psychological and cognitive exams that will test your ability to pay attention, problem solve, and remember things. Okay. So during that first week, you'll also have an MRI of your brain as well as a physical exam. In the second part of the study, um, the second week, you'll be given either memoride or placebo that looks like memoride three times a day for seven days, okay? Okay, so will I still be on the medications that I'm currently on or will I have to come off of those? No, you will still continue to take your medications that your psychiatrist already puts you on and the memoride or the placebo will be added on to those medications, okay? So moving along, um, you will also be given some more cognitive tests as well as a second MRI towards the end of the second week. And then two weeks after you actually finish the study, we will call you at home to follow up with you to make sure that you haven't had any additional side effects or problems and to answer any additional questions that might have come up for you at that time. Okay, so, sounds good. Okay, okay, so do you have any questions about what I've told you yeah, so far? Yeah, this sounds really great, but I'm wondering if the drug really works for me, can I get the drug when I go off the study? Can I start it up again? Um, we would welcome you to share that res the results of the study with your personal psychiatrist so that together you can make an appropriate decision regarding your care, okay? Um, so do you have any other questions at this point? Well, I'm kind of worried about insomnia because um, sometimes I have trouble sleeping. Is this one of the side effects of memoride? Well, there are a number of risks from participation in the study, which include possible side effects from memoride. So the side effects that have been reported for this medication include nausea, mm. vomiting, and the lack of appetite. Insomnia is not a known side effect, but it is possible that you might have a different reaction to it that is yet unknown, okay? okay? So there are a few other possible risks from participation in the study. And as I mentioned, you will be doing some cognitive testing. However, this will be done at a relaxed pace. But it's possible that taking the test might produce some discomfort from your feeling anxious or nervous. So these tests can usually be completed in about 75 to 80 minutes. And if it becomes too difficult, we can stop. Okay, what about the MRI? Isn't there a risk associated with the MRI? There are some minor risks associated with getting an MRI. For example, you'll be asked to lie on your back for about an hour and it might get uncomfortable for you to lie still for that long. In addition, the MRI machine makes a lot of noise but will give you some earplugs that will hopefully help with that. Also, some people get claustrophobic from being in the MRI scanner. Do you, do you know what claustrophobia I means? I think so. Isn't that like when people freak out if they're in really tight spaces? Right, that's correct. Uh -huh. Some people get very anxious or might even have a panic attack. <clears throat> so has that ever happened to you? No, that's never happened to me, so I think I'm okay. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, also, because an MRI is a very large magnet, it has the ability to move or attract metal. So before you enter into the room with the MRI scanner, we would ask you to remove all jewelry, and if you have any metal in your body, like metal plates or shrapnel or a pacemaker, for example, we would not allow you to have the MRI as it could place you at risk. Gotcha. Well, I don't have any metal in my body, so I okay. should be fine. Good. Well, thanks for letting us know that. So, as I mentioned earlier, you will have a full physical exam before participating in the study. So, we'll go over to your entire medical history in order for us to know more about your health. So I also wanted to mention again that participation in the study is not designed <coughs> to benefit you directly. However, the information that we learned from the study might help people with schizophrenia in the future. Yes, I understand that. Well, what happens if I decide not to participate? Well, one alternative to participating in the study is not to participate. Also, not participating or withdrawing from the study would not exclude you from possibly participating in other studies that we have or from things that you would otherwise be entitled to, such as medical care. So will my psychiatrist or any one of my family members be able to review my research records? No, all of your information will be kept confidential unless you request in writing that the information be released to a particular person or persons. Well, I think that sounds pretty reasonable. Um, I do have one other question. I noticed somewhere in the informed consent there was something about getting payments for participation. Can you talk a little more about that? Sure, yes. Okay. Um, there is a small amount of compensation which will hopefully cover your transportation and some other minor expenses that you might incur from participation in the study. And besides these costs, we don't foresee you having any additional costs associated with the study. So how much will I get? 
Well, the compensation is broken up into three parts. So for the first week of the study, you'll receive $50. For the second part of the study, when you'll be getting either the study drug or the placebo, which again I mentioned is a sugar pill, you'll receive $150. And if you get the MRI scans, you'll receive an additional $150. So if you complete the entire study, you will get a total of $350. Okay. Well, that doesn't sound like a lot of money, but I guess I'm really doing it for different reasons. Well, we, we appreciate that. Um, also, I mm -hmm. wanted to inform you that if you do sustain an injury during the time that you're participating in the study that's related to your being in the study, we'll provide short-term care at no cost to you. Does that include anything that might happen if I have side effects from the medication? Yes, it includes any problems that you have while you're in the study that are related to your participation in the study. And also, if you do have any problems, it's really important that you immediately let the nurses or the doctors know. And there are nurses on the unit 24 hours a day, so someone will always be there to help you. Okay. And in addition, if you need to reach me, as you see here on the consent form, um, there's my phone number and my pager number. Oh, so I can call you anytime. Yes, That's definitely. That's good to know. Yes. That's great. And separate but related, mm -hmm. you'll also find the name and the phone number of the patient advocate, the subject advocate. So feel free to contact her if you have mm -hmm. any questions or concerns that you don't feel comfortable talking to the research team about. Okay. okay? Is she really nice? She is very nice. Good. She is. So do you have any questions? Um, I think I'm very interested in participating in the study. Um, okay. It's something that I think is going to help other people, and I'd really like to help out. Okay, so I know I've told you this a few times already, but I just wanted to remind you that participation in the study is entirely voluntary and that you may choose not to take part or you may end your participation in the study at any time and there would be no penalty for doing so. And I want to emphasize that withdrawing from the study would not make you lose any benefits to which you are otherwise entitled. Okay, that sounds fine. Okay, so there was one last thing that I wanted to mention that is related to withdrawing from the study. So not only can you mm. stop the study at any time, but I can stop it too. So for example, if your symptoms worsen to the point that we feel it's no longer safe for you to continue in the study, we would withdraw you from the study at that point. Or if we get information about newly discovered side effects from the study drug, we may stop the study then too. So it's important that you know that your safety is always more mm. important than the research. Well, it's good to know that you're looking out for me, so I appreciate that. Sure. Well. Now that we've gone over the information about the study, have you made a decision about whether you'd like to participate or would you like to have some more time to think it over? I think I have had enough time. I would like to participate. I think it would be very interesting and I think I would be helping other people out, so I would like to. Great. Well, we very much appreciate <coughs> your willingness to be part of our study. And again, at any time, if you change your mind, just let us know. So since you've read over the consent form, mm -hmm. and if you have no further questions, I'd like to, to ask you to sign the document. Sure. And as a reminder, signing the informed consent document is acknowledging that the information in the consent form has been explained to you, and that you've been given the opportunity to discuss it and ask questions, and that you do indeed consent to take part in the study. Okay, so where do I sign? Um, right here, and here's a pen. Okay. There you go. Great. Well, Thanks. again, I want to thank you for agreeing mm. to be a part of the study, and I very much look forward to working with you. Oh, I think it'll be interesting. Thanks. Great. Well, oh, thank thanks you. a lot. So I'll be right back. I'm just going to go make a copy of this consent form okay. for you. Okay.